what you want, when you want it, where you want it. This is The Mesh. Hello and welcome to Brothers in Tech, our second deep dive episode off of our going paperless topic from a a couple of episodes ago. This is our second kind of deeper dive episode where we get a little more technical, a little more specific on some of the things that we talked about in our earlier episode. We are the Brothers in Tech, uh, Alan and Brian Jackson here. Brian, how are you doing? I'm good, Alan. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Long time no talk. It's been it's been <laughs> forever, forever. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is the mm-hmm. longest you and I get to talk together, which is great. So we, uh, yeah. we carve out this time and make it work. Um, you want to talk about family or anything, or we get we get no? no we, okay, let's, let's just talk tech. tech. Let's just talk okay. tech. Let's go. I like it. Yeah, let's do it. So we've been talking about going paperless, and that was our main topic episode. We did one deep dive episode just recently on this idea of how to create documents if you're going to go paperless, like handwriting or typing in and and note-taking of documents. Now let's go kind of the other end of the spectrum, Brian, where this is the idea where you are someone that desperately wants to go paperless, but you've got a whole lot of paper still in your life, okay? Uh, Whether it's paper on your own side, you still print a lot of things or get Mm -hmm. a lot of things in the mail that are paper, or maybe people are giving you a lot of paper uh, uh, items to at meetings or other things, Uh, or... If you've been like me, you've got a huge backlog of stuff from the past that is all paper that, like me, it kind of stresses you out. It kind of just, you know, puts you on edge to have all this paper laying around everywhere. So you want to get rid of it. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about today, this idea of converting uh, paper into documents that you can use on your computer and what are your options for doing so. Nice. um, so I think this is great. This is something I'm pretty passionate about. I've been really working on this for a long time, trying to get this... uh, where we need it to be. And um, so we're going to talk through some yes. options on this. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited here because you're going to, you're the person that's done a lot more in this world than I have. And uh, so I'm going to have some questions for you along the way uh, that and hopes good. that uh, you might be able to steer me in the right direction on doing some of this. So sure. yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to well, be let's, good. Um, let's, let's talk. I think, I think it's better for this conversation. Let's talk high end option down to what, anybody can can do as far as converting paper documents. Okay. Because and you mean high end, high end price? Well, both high end price and just and, there's also a volume situation too. So okay. let me kind of gotcha. explain that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, one route people can take if you're looking at converting a lot of paper into a digital format. If you talk to other experts, you talk to people who do this all the time, especially companies like law firms or places where you're dealing with just a massive amount of paper a lot of times. You can get what's called a it's a dedicated document scanner. Now, this is a these devices are meant for scanning large volumes of documents. Um, I will say that even though there's a lot of companies that make them, kind of your typical printer manufacturers also make these dedicated document scanners. Um, Fujitsu is probably the one that you're going to hear about the most as having probably, in my mind, the best reputation for having really mm. high quality document scanners. Their ScanSnap line of scanners are really well-known and well-touted for what they do. So the idea is that is a device. These document scanners can be a desktop scanner or can be a portable one. Uh, portable, they look like almost like a tube in a way that you can take with you, but they're solely meant for the purpose of I feed in paper and it's scanning it. And it's these devices are really meant to scan as quickly as possible and at the highest quality possible. Okay. Hmm. Um, they can be wired or wireless. You know, you could have them set up wirelessly to automatically transmit whatever they scan to your computer if you've got them nearby you, uh, or you can wire them in as well. Um, and they really are meant for if you've got a large amount of paper to scan, either backlog paper or a constant flow of paper coming into you now. These are probably your best bet if you're willing to put the money into it. Uh, you could be looking at two, three, four hundred dollars for a really good one of these devices. But 
Uh, they do things like you know, most of them will do duplex scanning, which means you can put in a two-sided sheet of paper and it will scan both sides automatically. Oh, that's nice. A large yeah. stack of paper you can put in. So if you've got an entire, let's say you just did a refinance on your home mortgage and you've got you know all the papers they give you, you can stack them all in and just let it churn through those scans. And it goes pretty quick. It'll, it'll get them all scanned in uh, front and back side. Um, Automatic document feeder, that that means you just stack them in there and just let it go. It's going to feed it in itself. And what's really great about these devices is many of them give you a lot of flexibility on choosing where you want to scan them to. So, for example, if you are, uh, if you go into a, uh, if you have it set up to like a folder on Dropbox and say, I want everything I scan to automatically go to a Dropbox folder, it'll Mm -hmm. just, it knows that and it can set those those paths to do that. So, you know, I think these kind of uh, devices, they're not for everybody, but they are for those of the people who say, I've got so much paper, I don't want to spend the rest of my life scanning documents. I want to get them done quick. Or you're constantly being uh, a paper in your workflow every day, and you just need to process them as quick as you can. And to know you've got some flexibility on how you handle those. These document yeah. scanners are really good. Um, so I, I've, I've, I've had a lot of experience with one of the scan snaps before. I forget the model number, but they're all very, they just vary in, you know, some of the features. Some of them vary in speed. Some of them vary in the size, the number of paper you can feed in at one time. But uh, you, I would recommend kind of go online, find some good reviews of a good, good quality model. <clears throat> but I really do think the Fujitsu scan snap series, you can't go too wrong with on those yeah. with that. So that's really, that's hardcore. That's like, I've got tons of documents that I just want to start plowing through them. So with those, Alan, just to to confirm, you could have, so let's say that you're, you're someone who deals with a lot of documents, has a lot of documents coming in, but maybe you're, you're also taking our previous advice of taking notes on an iPad and maybe you've started moving that direction. This could sit on its own connected to your network. You could put in a stack of documents, press a button on it, and it could send it directly to whatever you've set up, maybe some sort of drive somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't actually have to be there with your computer connected to it, or you could, but you don't have to for many of them. You don't have to. No, if you you connect it to a service and you say, look, I just want it to go automatically to my Google Drive or Dropbox, some of those models will allow you to do that. It just handles it. which is super slick. It's on your wireless networks. It's like just, I got a whole bunch of documents. Let me just feed them in. It'll take a few minutes to scan through all of them. And you can yep. just let it go. Um, so it is great. And the fact that it is a dedicated kind of standalone device, that's what its purpose is for. And you know, there are some advantages in having a device that's really meant for a specific purpose like that. So, What kind of size are we talking here? Um, I believe I believe I've seen somewhere you can go eleven by seventeen size paper. Okay, um, all right. Most are going to be the eight and a half by eleven, you know, or smaller. Okay. You can go into. And then the device itself is the size. Oh, the of device. A um, it's not much uh, wider no. than a sheet of paper. I mean, it's maybe a couple of inches on e- either side of a standard portrait sheet of paper. So, okay. you know, eleven inches wide or so. Um, mm-hmm. It almost looks like a small fax machine. That's the kind of the, if oh, you can okay. remember the kind of the yep. size of fax machines. That's what they look like. Yep. And um, okay. now that's the desktop ones. Again, the portable ones are more like a bar. They're not going to have your document feeder to like stack in a whole lot of paper. But if you just are feeding in like a single sheet at a time, you just need quick mm-hmm. scanning, especially if you're on the road and you're going to take it with you. These things are super portable. They're really like a small bar and it's just big enough for the paper to pass through it. Oh, nice. And it scans okay. it that way as well. So again, if you're looking for something a little more dedicated, a little bit more robust, that's kind of your high level, all right? That's that's the yep. top of the line in my mind as far as what you would need from a personal standpoint for scanning a lot of documents, all right? Now let's kind of move down to a, a secondary level. And this is where um, pros and cons with this, but this is kind of the level where you're going to use an all-in-one printer that has mm-hmm. a scanner capability on it. Most people that are buying printers now, I'd be shocked if it, you know your printer didn't also have some scanning capabilities, because they just make it so easy now to have an all-in-one device. It's like, oh, it's a printer, it's a copier, it's a scanner. And it's a scanner, and it can be a document scanner for you. It's just there's some things to keep in mind with it. Um, you know, it's these are the ones that you know, HP, Canon, Epson, all these other companies make these printers. If you see something that's an all-in-one, and it does say that scanning is one of the capabilities it has, 
And this printer can also double as your scanner. It allows you to feed in documents, either one sheet at a time, or some of them will have a document feeder that you can actually put in multiple pages, tell it to scan it, and it does the same thing as the document uh, scanner we talked about, the dedicated one. may not do it as fast, and keeping in mind that this is an all-in-one device, it's not a dedicated scanner. It's not meant and designed exclusively for scanning, so there are some trade-offs. Um, probably the biggest trade-off I've seen with these is I've generally seen the quality is not as good because, again, it's uh, trying to do a lot of different things in that unit. Scanning is not its top priority. Um, mm-hmm. And then w- where does the scan go is generally the biggest obstacle there because um, most of these all-in-one printers, especially because they're lower in cost, They don't have all the flexibility to say, save it to a Dropbox account or a Google Drive account. It's going to be more of a, either email it to you as an attachment, which is, it's all right. It it just takes extra steps to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or maybe it will, you can install a piece of software that it gives you for the printer on your own computer. And that's where you actually scan and it stores all the documents, but then you still have to send them to where you want them to go. So it's not going to give you all that flexibility of determining where your scans go and are saved on your computer or an online service. But again, they're a lot cheaper. I mean, you can get some of these all-in-one printers. I've seen some for under $100. Uh, most of the right. better ones probably between $100 and $300, $400. Um, you know, we're using an HP one here in our office that is an all-in-one printer scanner uh, that I use. And... Uh, I'm not currently using a dedicated document scanner because I just I don't really have that much paper to deal with on a day-to-day basis. Um, yeah. But the all-in-one is kind of a nice for a smaller, lighter volume of scanning. All right, if I get something in the mail every few days that I feel like I need to scan, then I can go walk to the printer, pop it in the scanner, tell it to scan to me, and either it scans it to me as an email or uh, I can save it on my desktop. And then I can organize it and do what I want to do with it later. But it is so nice on both of those two options to say, look, I'm just going to give it to this device and then I can trash the paper, get rid of it. Yeah. And at least I've now got it in my computer as a format I can work with. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a, I have an all in one in my office and uh, it's by brother and, oh, it's, that was, we should we should be connected. Oh, we should we connect really, with them. They should be really a sponsor. We really need to get them as a sponsor. They I'm should making, be a sponsor. I'm making a digital um, note right now, handwriting. <laughs> thank note you. Too. Good. Me that, um, I'm scanning. Uh, so, I think I, I like it in that although it sounds counterproductive, you may still need to create a document every once in a while. Something yeah. that's a, a hard copy. So having a printer, I get a little nervous thinking about an all-in-one scanner or only a scanner, and then not having a printer if something were to happen oh, yeah. at, at home. But again, the more we go towards this, the less I really need a printer. Um, yeah. And so that's good. The one thing I want to ask, so <clears throat> the dedicated document scanners, mm-hmm. do many of them have flatbed as well? Because Most I worried something not. about, yeah. uh, uh, okay, photos, right? Photos, are you going to want photos kind of scanned in this way, uh, sent in through a feeder, or are you going to want to place it appropriately? Have you tried doing things like photos in it? Are they, yeah, you is can it do a quality way on a the, feeder? You can do the photos through a document feeder and it, it, you do feed them in and it kind of slides them through the unit and comes out mm-hmm. the, the bottom. Um, it doesn't, I don't think it damages the photos. I think it's fine. I will say okay. that those document scanners aren't really meant, that's not their best feature. Okay. So they're going to give you good quality scans and they're going to do it fast, but things like perfect positioning to make sure it's exactly straight photo when you Mm -hmm. scan it and all that, um, as a little, it's it's not as strong as point. And like some of that probably happens in post-processing too, right? A little bit. And then, yeah, you are feeding your photo through an actual device and it's going through rollers and all that, which some people may not want. So if you're a little more meticulous about your photos and you want to take more care with your scans, then these all-in-one printers, most of them have a flatbed scanner on it. So not only a feeder to feed in a few sheets at a time, but also you can lift up the flatbed, put down your photo, close it and scan it. And you feel pretty confident you've got a good, solid, the scan is well positioned and, you know, it's obviously nothing else is touching the photo that doesn't have to be. Uh, uh, um, hardware wise. So, yeah. So for me, it, it feels, it feels like if you're, if you're someone who's looking through, uh, important 
items that you want to scan. For example, newspaper articles that you have, right? Those things may not be what you want to send through a roller scanner feeder, True. right? Yeah. Things that would be uh, that would be uh, crinkled on one side, or maybe they're uh, delicate and that they're kind of a, an older photo that you don't mm-hmm. want damaged. It might be nice to have a flatbed for some of those things. But if you're someone who's getting new paper constantly, you know, in the mail, something like that, the feeder, yeah, it makes a well, ton yeah. of sense. Contracts, yeah. documents, yep. uh, agreements. Things you don't really care about the quality of the paper anymore no, after you, you get it. You just got a digital copy of it. You that, you it. Know. Yep. Oh, another thing I yep. didn't even mention with the uh, – Snap scan series back on the dedicated document scanners is a lot of them also come with built in OCR capability, uh, which is that's uh, nice. uh, optical character recognition. Recognition, I, mean? I think yep. so. Yeah. So the idea again, if you scan in a document, it can all automatically translate that document into an editable document, meaning you can actually yeah, save great. it and make notes and changes to it and adjust it however you want, which is great. Yeah, the all-in-one uh, printer scanners are not going to give you that capability. You're going to have to use some really dedicated higher-end software to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I know that the Fujitsu's do have that OCR capability software built in that will allow yeah, you to do really that nice. when, you, when you bring them in. So, again, you pay a little less. You have some other functionality like printing and copying that you can do on these devices. But um, if you're a light scanning need just to process some papers that come in from time to time, and you don't really want to invest $400 on a dedicated box that only does scanning, then the all-in-one printers do a fine job, and they keep getting better and better every year. So the scanning, even if scanning is not their number one job, they're still a good, competent scanner for what you need. Um, yeah. So yeah. You're still going to be paying a few hundred dollars for these, right? For the good oh, yeah. ones sure. that have a, um, a document uh, feeder. And that's something I want to just reiterate. The document feeder is a it's a big deal for me when I was looking at one, I needed something that had a document feeder because I didn't want to be stuck putting on a flatbed over and over, um, and doing one at a time. You want to put the, you know, eight page document in there, click go and have it all come in. Um, but I don't have the two sided, which again, when you're talking about this whole environmental piece of trying to print two sided and save paper, it becomes a frustration that I don't have yeah. two-sided scanning. So there's some things to keep in mind there of, of really moving forward and trying to get rid of your paper. So. Well, yeah, and that was when I chose the all-in-one pay- printer scanner that we have now. Automatic duplex, meaning front and back scanning, was a must for me. I had to yes. have that because, uh, I like you, I get a lot of papers that are front and back, which is great because I want to save paper. But I need to scan it, and I don't want to have to go back and rescan the backside and then figure out how to match those together. That right. just is an extra step I don't care to do. So, yeah, having duplex scanning is really important. Yes. So if that's yep. important to you, and, again, you're looking at a high volume, I think considering a dedicated document scanner may be a way to go. If you're looking at light volume of scanning, then you can go with an all-in-one printer scanner. Just really look for that duplex feature on there and the automatic document feeder to know that it will do it Uh, because again, you don't want to have to go and keep having to redo the pages on the backside just to, to get both sides of the documents. Right. Um, So again, all in printer scanner is going to be pretty, it's going to be useful for most people. This podcast is sponsored by Jackson creative, a custom communication agency located in downtown Hickory, North Carolina, specializing in online content creation to learn more visit thejacksoncreative.com. Jackson Creative, we tell your story. Now, I do want to go into a third option. Now, this is an option that anybody can do right now with no additional hardware as long as you've got a mobile phone with a camera on it uh, or even a tablet with a camera on it. And, you know, your phone is a scanner, okay? So they have really upgraded the technology on your phones and tablets in the last several years to be better document scanners. So if I am uh, in, for example, my notes app on a Mac or on my iPhone, uh, there is an option now, wasn't there until just maybe the last year or two, to say I want to scan a document. It has a little camera icon on your notes. I want to scan a document. And it turns your phone into a, a scanner. Now, you have to position the document just right. Make sure it's lit pretty well so you can read it. And you hold your phone over the document. It'll show you when the document fills your entire frame. Uh, most of those, the little scanning apps on your phone will actually say, hey, 
okay, you know, move it closer or move it further away mm-hmm. so you can get a better scan. And once it has a good scan, it snaps it. And now you have a digital version of your, of your document. Um, it's great. I still end up doing that a lot when I'm at a meeting, you know, if somebody hands out an agenda and I don't really want to have to keep up with that agenda after I leave the meeting, I'll snap it with my phone and I can recycle it or give it back to them and not even have to worry about, you know, taking it home with me. And that's, that's joyous for me. Cause again, anytime I can minimize not having to carry more paper around, I'm very happy about it. Yeah. So it's great. It, it works really well for that. And it, like you said in a previous deep dive episode, when you're talking about note apps, you know, a lot of these note apps that we are take, talking about have the capability of inserting a photograph and they'll let you use the camera on your phone to actually snap the document right there on the spot. Um, it's not going to give you the clearest scan resolution just because it is using your camera on your phone. Your hand's still going to shake a little bit. You know, it's not going to be a perfect flatbed or document feeder right. scan. But if it gives you something that you can read and you can see, that may be just enough for you. And maybe you mm-hmm. just get in the habit of doing really good scans with your own phone. Um, you know, it's just like they say with cameras. Sometimes the best camera is the one you already have. Uh, you happen to have in your pocket. I think it's the same way with scanning. If you're somewhere and you need to scan a document, your phone's right there ready to go. Um, yeah. Do you do a lot of scanning with your phone? Just to, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly moving that direction and I see more and more of this happening in meetings. You know, you'll have the, the people that still bring the handouts and then people are like, Oh no, I'm good. Let me just take a picture of it. And mm-hmm. they pass it along, which I think is great. It's kind of teaching people that we don't need to be printing out mm. all of the things that we're giving out. Um, I do. I, uh, I try to scan every so often. It's still not the, the, the natural thing for me to think about. Yeah. So if I'm in my office, a student brings in a, a document and I want to scan it. I don't think to myself, let me get my phone out and take a picture. I usually say, well, let me go over to a flatbed scanner and, and do it. Sure. So that the fact that that's still there, I want to get to the point where, um, that's more natural, but you're right. The, the quality of the, the phone cameras, is so good now that you can get some really excellent pictures of whatever documents you want. I will say one of the the challenges, and you mentioned it before about making sure the light is correct. Mm. And it, it, is there anything more frustrating than trying to not put your shadow on a document? Oh, I mean, I, I find I haven't it found so, anything more frustrating than that. I kind of, <laughs> it's so, it's so frustrating to me. Uh, no, it is. Seriously. Seriously. Yeah, no. seriously, that is my, <laughs> you know, that is my yeah. biggest frustration. Yeah. So uh, that's one of the things that kind of annoys me is I'll try. It's like, oh, I just got this in the mail at home. Uh, or there's a they taking a picture of checks, which you, of course, can yeah. do now, right, mm-hmm. to, to deposit. Yeah. I find myself having to move around about 20 different directions mm-hmm. to try to not have my shadow in there. Um, and if, you know, if the paper itself has a gloss to it, well, then that's just a nightmare, right? Yeah, Trying is. to get it so that there's uh, backlight well, is not uh, an or issue. Or Brian, but. you can be like me, and, and I care. <laughs> and I just so happen to have I set up on in my desk in my office. I have a light that is kind of a arm beam down light. It's a nice light mm-hmm. from my office, but it's actually one where I have a clear surface to the left of me on my my L shaped desk, and that is my spot where that's where I scan things. So oh, I flip, I have the light on and it's nice, even light. It's not going to cast shadows the way I happen to lay things down. That's where I do the depositing checks. That's where I do scanning documents and all that. So that's my workflow is nice. most of the time okay. I'll use my phone and scan the document. If I've got multiple pages um, and I really want a good, good, solid, well-lit copy, I'll go use my all-in-one printer scanner to do it. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, if you, if you find yourself using your phone as your scanner a lot, it's really simple to just get a, a nice light to kind of create a nice space to do that. And that's kind of your workflow. Um, so yeah, it's I'm almost like we set that up. That. It's almost like we set it up for you to, a to bit, brag about your, a, your a little bit. spot there. And, and, okay. I'm very picky. <laughs> I'm the kind of person that, you know, I snap a check to in my bank app to deposit it. And I look at it and I'm like, hmm, the lighting's really bad on that. I don't, yeah, I, I'm going to redo could have been it. Straighter. I'm going to redo it. That could have been yeah, I could have been straighter. <laughs> I could have been a little more straight on with that shot. I can do it. Not that I think their computer systems really care, but it's, right. it's important to me. No, I'm, so, I'm um, kind of with you on that. Now, I will <laughs> say from an app standpoint, so I mentioned you know, the, like, a lot of built-in native apps on uh, your, your phone, that whatever note-taking app you take, 
Uh, normally it's going to have capability to snap photos or scan documents in there. If you want to go a little step up, you can get a dedicated scanner app on your phone, something that's really mm-hmm. meant for scanning. That is its purpose. And what's going to happen with it is it may be a, it may be do a little better job of positioning your document and making sure it's straight and doing any adjustments once you scan it. Uh, there's one I'm just going to mention. It's not my pick because I've got a, another pick to mention later in the episode, but one I will mention that I think is pretty nice for a free one is called Scanner Pro. It is a app on the App Store you can download. I know for the iPhone, I think there's a Windows uh, type version for it as well, or for Android. And um, it has some limited OCR functions, not great, but you know, if you just want to scan a document but really have it kind of nice and straight and it really formats it like a good document and does a good clean scan on your phone, there is a free version of Scanner Pro. There's tons of other apps like that where you can just say, I want a more, I want a better scanner app on my phone than just using the notes camera. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's fine too. It'll save them in different places, or you can tell the app to save your documents in a different place on your phone. Most of the time, they're just going to save them to your photo roll, your camera roll, so you can then export them and share them wherever you want to. Um, so there's a lot of free and some paid apps to do scanning on your mobile device. But basically what we're saying is that there's really those three levels. That's kind of the three levels that exist now. You'll notice, Brian, that I didn't mention any of those levels, like the original standalone flatbed scanner that I think we right. used to have and sell because honestly, yeah, why they would you just have don't it? make yeah. those anymore. Yep. You either go high end with a true document scanner for bigger volumes documents, or you use the flatbed uh, top of your all-in-one printer scanner right. or you use your mobile phone. That's kind of the three levels that we're really at right now for scanning documents. Um, and Alan, I'm, are you, I'm in uh, between two and three. I've used one. Okay. I, I I like one. Actually, I still mm-hmm. have it on my wish list to get a new document scanner at some point. But I'm pretty much now, all my major scanning is on my all-in-one printer scanner. And then my on-the-go scanning at meetings or anywhere else I go is on my phone. So Yeah. So do you, um, what about what about getting that information from the uh, the phone if I take a picture of it? Is the path of getting it into where I want to store it pretty easy now, or is it, that it the part that I'm going to use? A, is that the part I'm going to use a scan app for? So I use yeah. a scan app, and maybe I've already set up it's going to go into a receipts folder or something else. That's where you really got to look at your workflow and decide what, yeah. what's going to work best. So, for example, if I'm an Apple Notes user, I use Apple Notes for everything. Yep. That is where I want to store all my notes, and that's also where I want to scan documents to keep them with my notes. For example, if I go to a meeting, I'm handwriting notes for a meeting. I want to scan the documents from that meeting. So they've given out a financial report. They've given out a a board, uh, an agenda. I snap those photos inside the notes app so it stays within the notes file. So if I go Mm -hmm. back to view the notes from that meeting, I see my handwritten notes, and I see the photographs of the documents. That's great. But if you wanted those to go to Dropbox or Google Drive or some other place, you're probably going to need to go with one of those more dedicated scanner apps on your phone that has those capabilities, okay? Yeah. So again, if you're going to scan within a Notes app and you're planning on keeping that photo inside the Notes app, then you're fine. If you want to scan it to where you have more flexibility and you're going to send it to different places or share it with other people a lot quicker and easier or stored on an online storage site, you'd probably need to look at one of these dedicated scanner apps that'll let you do okay. that. Again, you, yep. there's free ones. They may just limit you on how many scans you can have in their app at, at a time. I know Scanner Pro, that's the way it is. You scan it and then you can send it or share it or save it somewhere. Uh, but it'll only let you keep two current documents in your queue at any given time. So you just need to delete So you have to one, do something with them before you... Get rid yeah. of it put it somewhere and then delete it out of the app so you can scan a new one. Yeah. If you go with a paid version, obviously they will do, they remove those limitations, but um, yeah, you're right. If you kind of have a workflow in mind, you're going to need to think about an app that will scan and send it to a particular place. I will say in our next deep dive, which I'm kind of excited about is we are going to talk a little bit about that workflow. So let's say you've got a way of scanning your documents. You've got, Oh, you've got your handwriting taken care of. You've got your scanning under control 
Now you just want everything to go into a place to manage it to the and right organize spot. it exactly Fishing right. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that at the next deep dive. But um, yeah, yeah, there's some things to keep in mind. So cool. there's a lot of options, and it really just depends right. on how much scanning you see yourself doing and uh, what type of equipment you want to have around with you to do it. So Yeah. Good. Well, to me, I can I can say you've gotten me thinking about potentially a scanner device because there's to me there's still a benefit for I open up mail, I'm still getting certain things sent to me in the mail, and I'd love to be able to say there's a stack of things that I would like to really quickly just put over there, scan in, and of course the workflow is going to be important. How does that get to the you know the the bank folder? How does that get to the you know the uh, charity folder? How do those uh, things get organized? But I like the fact of doing that rather than to to necessarily fiddle with my my camera um, mm-hmm. and doing that unless I can get it so that one of these days I can pull up my uh, my phone, turn the camera camera app on, snap a picture of a document, and it says, "Oh, this looks like a document. Do you want to put it in your receipts folder or do you yeah. want to put it in this folder?" Oh, that would be that's nice. where I want to be eventually if yeah. I can get to that point. And I think you can probably do that with some of these apps, right? You can just say. I'm yeah. only using this app for receipts, so mm-hmm. therefore, anytime I pull it up, it's going in a receipts sure. folder. Uh, would be a nice. Yeah, you do. could so. go with the approach of saying I've got one app where I scan receipts. I've got mm-hmm. one app that I scan for full documents, right. and you already have, already have those apps. Say, look, my receipts. I want you to put in this place whenever you scan them. These other documents put in this other place. So you can you can definitely work out a workflow yeah. like that. But um, yeah. but I think well, we'll get I'll show you some workflow dive, stuff yeah. that might even help a little bit more with that in the next cool. deep dive. So that's our talk about scanning and just kind of getting paper documents converted into a digital format uh, in your life. Brian, we always kind of do it at the end of these episodes, discussions, we have our bits, our brothers in tech suggestion. So what, uh, what's your suggestion for this episode? Yeah, so I uh, kind of preparing for this, I still haven't had a lot of experience with uh, the scanner apps, but one that I saw had a lot of great reviews and uh, I started using uh, for a very short amount of time, but it, it seems to be pretty nice. It's called Cam Scanner, mm-hmm. uh, C-A-M-S-C-A-N-N-E-R. Uh, Cam Scanner, it's, a, it's an app just like many of these are. There's a ton of them out there, um, but it does have the OCR capabilities. Um, it will do some simple scans of your documents. So when you put it in, it can be able to uh, see uh, certain types of text that will pop out. It's got a lot more depth that it can provide if you were to, you know, use its cloud feature and pay Mm -hmm. for it to be able to say, oh, it'll search for lots of other things like connections of images that you put in there and even scan the images and try to tell you what it is. Uh, It's got an ability to to have its own storage, cloud storage, but you can also tell it to to put towards your drive or something. I will say there, if you use the free version, it'll automatically put a little watermark in the corner. But if you're using it for things like, you know, documents for, you know, a bill that comes in, you may not care if in the bottom right, it has a very small watermark. Uh, It would be a difference if it put it across the entire document, but it puts it in the small corner, which, you know, didn't bother me too much and can export. So. Okay. So that's that's called cam. Cam cam scanner, all uh, all one word. Yeah. All right. So. I uh, I need to. I, I've never not familiar with that one at all. So I'll have to check that out. That yeah. sounds pretty nice. Yeah, um, it's not bad. not bad. Well, my 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 bit, Brian, is a little more on the high end. Okay, I'll just go ahead and kind of give you the the heads up on that. All right. This is not for the casual. Just hey, I just need a little pocket uh, phone app scanner just to have for once in a blue moon. This is where you really you really do a lot of scanning with your phone, and you want your phone to become your primary scanning device. There is an app that's kind of considered, in my mind, top of the line of like the, one of the best mobile scanner apps. It's called ScanBot, and uh, it's available on both uh, and iOS for iPhone or Android. It is truly full-featured, all right? So this is the idea. that with, There is a free version that you get that will let you do some things, but then you can... Uh, Purchase, uh, you know, if you really want to do some more with it, there's a paid version that actually is like at a minimum like four dollars a month. So you can buy the app for like sixty dollars if you want the full version, or you go with the subscription model for like four or five dollars a month. But what's great about it is, that, you know, it'll obviously snap your photos, your your documents, and scan them. You can mark it up with annotations. So once you scan it, you can make little marks with a little pen or notes on it right away. You can add your signature to it. So if it's a digital document, you sign on your digital, on your mobile phone, you can just add your signature automatically to it. 
It'll automatically straighten up your documents and make sure they're perfectly straight, uh, really corrects for all the perspective. You know, it just it's really good. It does a really, really good job of taking those documents and turning it into a really nice scanned document on your phone. You can go with the paid version, which will give you a lot more capabilities of where you save your, your scanned documents. Like if you wanted to set up a route and say, I want it to go to my Dropbox folder or my mm-hmm. Google Drive folder, you can add those, uh, those routes to it. And then every document you can scan, you can say, send that one to this destination. Send this document to this destination, and it will just send it right there for you. Plus, it also do some OCR, the optical character recognition. It will do. Um, it really focuses on like if you scan a business card, it yeah. will know yeah. where to get the name, the address, the telephone, and populate that automatically for you, which is great. So, it, it's kind of the the Mac Daddy as far as I'm concerned, as far as mobile scanning apps. And again, the limit the free version is limited, but if you just need to do basic scanning and you don't need to worry about sending it to a lot of different places. You've got it there ready to use. But if you really are pretty heavy and wanting to do a lot more mobile scanning with your phone, um, and you can do about four or five dollars a month, you get tons of these capabilities. You can do so many different uh, uh, number of scans, you know, in a month, mm-hmm. and it's a much much more professional level model for that app. So, so yeah, so this thing's gonna hmm? this thing's gonna actually handle a lot of the workflow things that we might try to work yeah, around later. It it's going to do a lot of that for you, it right? Will. So if you're willing to yeah. pay for it, you don't even need to listen yep. to our next t- tape dive. Just right. buy ScanBot, <laughs> pay the money for it, and you got a lot of capabilities. But we're going to show you some different, different ways to do it, even with some some free apps or free free methods. Um, yeah, that's cool. So anyway, that's ScanBot. I just you know I've, I've used it before. I don't currently pay for it because I've kind of shifted to more to my scanning with my equipment, but. Um, if I was going to do everything exclusively through my mobile phone, that would be the app I would then shift over to. So Nice. Yeah. Right. ScanBot. So that is cool. our deep dive for yeah, today. So again, our second deep dive off of our going paperless main topic. And uh, we will get together for our final deep dive on this topic where we talk about those workflows, kind of some ideas where if you're someone that you've gotten intrigued with everything we've talked about, you say, I'm going to do scanning. I'm going to do handwriting. But now i got to figure out how to make it all flow into a very efficient paperless workflow. We're going to talk you through some ideas, a ways to think about that with the next deep dive. So, Brian, I forgot to mention this on the last episode, but if anybody does have some questions or comments, how do they, uh, how do they reach out to us? Do you remember yeah. how they reach out to I us, Brian? I think so. I think so. So they're going to they're gonna email info at themesh.tv. I-N-F-O. Info at Info at, at the mesh TV. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm learning it. I'm you learning got it. it. Yeah. You got it. So, and uh, that's yeah, where you send, send your information. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know how you scan. Let us know, yeah. you know, what, what kind of workflow you might have. Cause I, I'm always trying to figure out some, some other creative ways of, uh, you know, wasting my time to uh, set up these things. So uh, we spend more I'm time trying to build that. these systems than maybe what <laughs> we actually more save <laughs> in the time. Yeah, but um, well, and the one disclaimer I'll say with all this is just like I, mean, I think we probably need to start saying this on almost every episode, Brian. Technology changes quickly, so by the time yeah. you listen to this episode, there could be brand new apps out there. Some of the apps we mentioned may have gone out of business. I mean, we don't know. So just be. Even though we're giving you our recommendations and tips, we always recommend going out and doing some searching and looking at other Absolutely. reviews on yeah. app stores and see if there's some new options mm-hmm. that maybe weren't around when we uh, when we recorded these episodes. So, yep. Yeah. And I and again, I mentioned it last time, but it, it bears repeating the same idea. If you're going to be changing, make sure whatever solution you use now, you can back up everything that you have. Yeah. Everything that you scan, everything you do, put it in a place where it doesn't matter what app you need yeah. in the future to access it. So don't ever run the risk of losing your documents because they're locked into an app that you, that is no longer yeah. available. So yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan of using their own cloud services yeah. because I just don't know where it is. And if they go out of business, where I'm going to be able to get it. So good yeah. call. Good points on all the right. way around. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap up fun. this, this uh, deep dive episode. Again, we'll have one more coming up soon. So for brothers in tech, this is Brian and Alan Jackson. Thanks so much for listening. Bye-bye. What you want, when you want it, where you want it. 
This is The Mesh.